on this latest episode, we got Got To Move Pro Wrestling's Choco Pro with two incredible matches. We even got Day 3 of the G1 Climax Storyline by New Japan Pro Wrestling with, B with A Block action. However, Tetsuya Naito is out with an injury, so some matches will be forfeit. We even got, of course, NXT UK. As you know, we got a brand new NXT UK champion. They will be crowning a number one contendership for that match against Ilya Dragunov. And of course, we'll continue with the semifinals of the NXT UK Heritage Cup tournament for the number one contendership for that. We even got Impact Wrestling entering their fallout after Victory Road, but with the surprising shocking development with X Division Champion Josh Alexander exercising his right for option C. But I'm also going to review MLW, which is one of the recent events they haven't done in a while, called MLW Fusion Alpha, which was an amazing show to watch, and also throw in some news updates for all of you. So Let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So let's begin with the latest Choco Pro event. They only had two matches. The first one is Saruyi versus Mei Shiruga. Now I always mention this about Mei Shiruga, that she's a little sly devil. She even says that she's going to be nice. Now, you know the old expression for many people, from your mouth to God's ears. Well, basically, Balian Aki is one of those guys that wasn't quite sure if he believes her. He knows that she's out of her mind. That she's gonna play nice. There was a moment she did tell him, told ba Balian to shut up while he was commentary. And of course, she even tried to play a little dodgeball with with Saruya and this whole thing. The, the match was great, you know. But of course, May Shruga, she will always be that same little slide devil. She may has an angel of face, but deep down in her freaking soul she's the devil as balian aki would say but however they decided to give her a nickname as soon as the match was over because it was may shiruga the win so saruya came up with the perfect name the goblin apple it was a good name so basically she's the goblin apple she says she's the big apple but we can say she's the goblin apple now, our next match is the main event. What we have is Yuna Mizumori teaming up with M Masahiro Takahashi taking on Chi Koishikawa and Balenaki. It was an amazing match. I have to say, things have now becoming a bit more serious. As you know, the previous one I forgot to mention. Now things are being more interesting. We'll be getting people will be coming for the championships, such as the Super Asian championship and all Asian the the Asian Dream Tag Team Championship. But Balinaki put a lot of effort into this match, even though she knows Chi is almost similar as Mei Shruga, but however it wasn't enough. It was Yuna Mizumuri who picked up the victory by playing the a somewhat version of the superfly move that Cole Cabana does on Chi to pick up the victory. So uh, it was a good match. Now we get to the jungle tournament. I was surprised who was going to be. There was lesser people in this particular event. Even the ref had to be involved. But Saruyi was the one who drew the card where she was like only 
gets to be a ball oh, on the second round, but it, if she did not make it all the way, the person that made it all the way was none other than Balenaki, and she even even played a little game with May Shruga that he was going to give her a piece of the chocolate and he's like nope it's mine so we even got two more Choco Pro shows coming up this coming Saturday and Sunday on Japanese time but I will do those the, those events on during the day times here in the United States but for now let's move on with continuing more with New Japan Pro Wrestling the G1 Climax 31 Okay, so we're now in day three for the G1 Climax. Now, as I mentioned before, Tetsuya Naito is now officially out with a knee injury after what happened in the first day against Zack Sabre Jr. So basically things got a little messed up. However, I would have assumed that they had an alternate standing by to step in in case if he was out. I've seen this before, but this time looks like it's not going to happen. So whatever matches they had with Naito in the original plans, the rest of them, uh, th they'll be considered as forfeits, and those who will not be facing Naito will get two points. However, amongst those guys who received the two points is none other than one half of the G.O.D. Tonga Loa. Now, Tonga was a bit disappointed the way this whole thing down. Now, he felt that this was not the right thing that he wanted to earn those two points. He's the kind of guy who likes to get dirty, but however, he was placed in a special match against none other than Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata. It was a good match. I think it put Tangaloa into the test. Now, you can say Tangaloa is a tag team specialist, but how often do we see him in singles competition? And that kind of plays out in a good way, but he did pretty good. However, in this particular match, there was no outside interference by Yado, but it was Tonga that pulled off the victory against Nagata. I have to say, this was a very interesting match seeing Tonga Loa in singles action. Now let's jump into the five, no, four matches involved in the in the G1. As I mentioned, the, the Naito matches have been forfeit. We got the A block ones. First match, Great Okan and Toto Yano. Now this particular time, Great Okan hasn't forgotten what Yano did to him. If you guys recall, Yano grabbed his ponytail and tied him up in the bike rail. And this time, he hasn't forgotten. But somehow, Great Okan was prepared for whatever trick Yano had up his sleeve. One of his tricks that he tried to pull off was the handcuffs. He tried to handcuff Great Okan, but somehow, he was able to get Yano. Even Yano had the key for Great Okan said that coming but somehow Yano was able to pick up the victory would I mean get out of the bike row before it's too late during the count out but it was not enough for him due to the fact that he got man dismantled by Great Ocon so basically Great Ocon won this one and gained two points now before I end this part I will talk about the point system our next match is Bullet Club versus Bull Club or we could have a bit of a conflict we got Yujiro Takahashi along with Pieta. Uh, as you know, Yujiro is a member of the sub-faction House of Tor Torture taking on Kenta. Now, Kenta tried to throw in the two-suite with him, but however, Yujiro did not want to do it. Now, the commentators are questioning, could we see a problem with the Bull Club? We have seen this thing before with the Elite. That could lead to something like that. Now, I will try to do a discussion about this later on and if I can get it right. But for now, it was a really good match. Even Kenta put up a good fight. But Yujiro was the one who did everything possible. And he... But it was not enough. He was... <sighs> um, Yujiro got go to sleep by Kenta and this allowed Kenta to win his match next match we got Tomo Ito Ishii taking on the golden star Kota Ibushi it was a hard hitting match now you all know Ishii is a powerhouse however Ibushi always finds ways to 
overcome uh, wrestlers in that type of caliber. And he did when he pulled off the Kamigoye, allowing himself to win the match. But however, his opponent is the one who's going to win the, the last match in the main event. We got Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shingo Tagagi. This was a freaking battle I never witnessed. As you know, Zack Sabre Jr. has been declared as the technical wizard, and he put up a hell of a fight. But he forced Shingo to tap out. And now he may have in the future a, a title shot in the future for a shot of title. However, he did claim that he could get win the entire G1. Now, I wouldn't pass by him. I know he has won once before the New Japan Cup, but he lost that match against Ibushi. I mean, uh, Okada. But it is going to... But at the post-match, he made reference how he defeated the Japanese Dragon, and he talked about another dragon. And that dragon is the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. So I would love to see that. So I don't know when will that happen, but I hope, hope it happens. I would love to see that. Okay, so let's talk about the point system right now with the G1. As you know, the B block already had the first two uh, ma first two days, the first two matches that they had. So I'm only doing the B block right now. So Ibushi has one loss and one win, so he gains two points. As for Naito, as you know, he lost his first match, but however, due to the knee injury, he is out, and all the matches have been forfeited. So that's going to happen for the remainder of the entire tournament. Shingo Tagagi has one win and one loss, so that's two points. Zack Sabre Jr. has two wins, so that makes it he has four points. Uh, Toro Yano, he has only one win, one loss, two points. Tomohiro Ishii has z uh, two losses, no wins. Yujiro Takahashi, one win and one loss. Tangaloa, well, one loss, one win. Kenta, one loss and one win. And of course, the Great Okan, they have, he has two wins. So basically, you can look at Great Okan and Zack Sabre Jr. that they're in the lead in this point. Now, I could say, most likely, I would say Zack Sabre Jr. could be one of the potential wrestlers that could win the G1. So don't pass that around me. That's only just the, the beginning. We still got a lot more to go. So at the moment, let's move on right now with NXT UK. Okay, NXT UK. As you know, we're now entering the semifinals for the NXT Heritage Cup, where they're trying to determine a number one contender to face uh, Tyler Bate. We had Gallus' member, Wolfgang taking on Tailman. This was a pretty interesting match. Now, I knew this match was going to be good. The moment I found out Tailman and Wolfgang will be facing. Now, my biggest concern is how how would Tailman dismantle the Wolf? And watching this match kind of told Wolf wasn't going to give up that easily. He The first two rounds ended up in zero. Second, third round, Wolfgang was able to pulled it off. Fourth round, of course, Tailman won. However, it was the fifth round that helped them that helped made the win for Wolfgang when of course Gauss took out um what's his name? <coughs> uh, Rohan Raja out of the equation. Now, do I think this is going to be the end of for Tillman and Raja? I don't know. We'll just see how that is. But Wolfgang is in the semifinals, but we got one more match in the semifinals before we get to the finals. Now, we were supposed to see a little tagging by subculture, but that weasel, Sam Gradwell, destroyed it. But, of course, subculture said they'll fix it. Now, celebrating the fact that Wolfgang won his match... They decided to celebrate in Jordan Devlin's dressing room. And Devlin 
was fit. You know, Gallus boys, they don't care. They want to have fun. That's how it rolls for those guys. But it was great. Our next match is a women's match. We have Isla Dawn taking on the fashionista Ginny along with Joseph Connors. Now, this particular match, I was curious. Now, if you guys followed Isla Dawn, she's been collecting um, souvenirs from anybody. It doesn't matter who, but I don't know if she was able to. Even she may um, freaked out Joseph Connors. I'm like, I would be freaked out too, but it ended great with him. I'm like, wow. But however, it was Cheeky that was able to win the match. But however, I don't know for sure. Did Isla Dawn got her little souvenir? To me, I would love to see that. Now, as you know, Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter are now headways. As you know, they had a huge success with Saxon Huxley in a six-man tag team match. It looks like uh, Trent Seven is looking for opponents for a tag team match with him and Tyler Bate. So, he picked Smith and Carter to be their opponents. Uh, and this is going to play out pretty well because now they're trying to find ways. How could they get involved in the tag team division? That is the tag team title. That is something that we know for sure could happen. Now, our main event is to determine the number one contender for the NXT UK title. We have Rampage Brown, Nathan Frazier, and a. I have to say, much of the match, I thought it was going to go to Rampage because he seems big, he seems strong. But however, A-Kid was able to pull it off. The Spanish sensation did it by pinning um, someone. I forgot who it was. Um, right now, I remember uh, pinning... Rampage, I think it was pretty good. I think this is going to be an interesting match against Ilya Dragunov. But do I think that he's going to drop the title? Nope. I will not. I don't believe that. But we'll see what happens uh, when that day comes. Okay. So Impact Wrestling just entered their fallout after... The events of what happened in Victory Road this past Saturday or Sunday. As you know, Scott Demore is addressing the fact that Josh Alexander has now had uh, the right to privilege the option C. Now, for those who are new, you ask, what is option C? An X Division champion has the right to give up his title for a shot of the Impact World title. Now, this was a technique that was used was created by Austin Aries. Now, there are many times he has done it. There have been champions in Impact Wrestling who are afraid of it. This was a, a something that, of course, Chris Sabian told Josh Alexander to do. He was fully aware of this thing in Option C because Chris Sabian, for those who don't know, he did the same thing too when he won the X Division title years ago when he challenged Bubba Ray for the Impact World title. So, now this is going to be interesting. Even the more Christian Cage are saying, are you sure? Do you want to do this? And he was 100% sure. Now, Josh, Al and, uh, his uh, Alex, no, Ace Austin was saying that he was a coward, that he should not have done what he did. But Josh Alexander reminded him, I'm the one who beat you for the title. So, basically, it was a huge words of encouragement. Uh, words of exchange, but however, turned to a brawl. But Ace Austin injured um, Christian Cage right in the eye, and later on, of course, he was not medically cleared. But the more put Josh Alexander to take on Ace Austin in the main event. Now, Rich Swan and R Willie Mack are now have their sights on different things that are happening in Impact. Willie Mack says that he is sites for the to call your shot goblin now those who don't know in bountiful glory they know take a shot the last person that did that was none other than rhino but he could win it as for of course rich swan he even said he would like to get involved in the x division tournament he's also an x division champion but he has a right to use the option c so he's not an idiot on that however the little plans were being interrupted by none other than the so-called most professional wrestler, Brian Myers. 
So they set up in a tag team match later on. But however, he did not pick up any of the guys from the learning curve, from the learning tree. And he picked the point of partner of his choosing. But we'll get to that in a bit. Now, we have Hikuleo, along with Chris Bay, taking on David Finley. The match was pretty good. However, it would, the upset is David Finley was able to pick up the victory. And they tried to dismantle uh, Finn Juice. But all of a sudden, a familiar face in the Bullet Club fan base, or should I say someone we know in Bullet Club, appeared. And that is El Fantasmo. He showed up, gave uh, David Finley the groin, the Ju uh, Juice Robinson the groin, but at the same time, the sudden death on Juice Robinson. So basically, we don't know which Bullet Club members will make their appearance. So basically, if uh, El Fantasmo is there, that means Jay White is sent him. Now, as you know, Violent by Design or VB or VBD are disappointed in Rhino. So we could be seeing the exodus of Rhino from Violent by Design. So they're expecting him to give his decision next week. And I'm kind of curious how this is going to be. Now, we jump into an interview with Chelsea Green and Matt Cardona. Now, Matt Cardona claimed he's already done with Rohit Raju, but not Chelsea. She wants a retribution towards him. So, this is going to be a good match. But all of a sudden, we see Kimberly and Brandy Lauren obtain more souls for Sue Young. Now, I don't know what is going on, but it's kind of interesting to see. Now, we get to the match, Rohit Raju versus Chelsea Green. The match was good. It was great. Rohit Raju was being the cocky SOB that he is, but all of a sudden, a former member of the Desi Hit Squad showed up. Raj Singh took out Matt Cardona. Chelsea Green dropped the ball and apparently lost the match. Now, do we think this is over between these two? I don't know, but we'll see what happens then. Now, Eddie Edwards is distraught for what Moose and Morrissey did to Alicia Edwards, but Sammy Callahan reminded him, you tattled your business the last time I hurt Alicia. You remember that? You got what you wanted. So he's encouraging him, do it again. So they did, they followed, found moves, they beat him senselessly until they decided to find um, Morsi, but they eventually did near the end of the episode where the more intervened and told him that he'll give him a street fight against him. So that's going to take place next week. Now we get to the match between Rich Swan, Willie Mack against Brian Myers, and of course VSK, who it was a former protege of Brian Myers. The match was good, but however, it ended with a screw up. Sam Beal screwed up, hit VSK. I don't know what Myers would think of that. If I were you, My Myers, punch the hell out of him. Teach him a lesson. But he's not going to do that. Now, as you know, Bound for Glory is in Las Vegas. Apparently, the Swingers Palace has a bit of a problem. They're trying to deal with the situation, but they don't know how. They even sent out a letter to the Moor to find out what they're going to do. Now, we all know where the... If you guys know, the Good Brothers are on vacation. Basically, they don't need to worry. They beat up everybody. Now, the real question is... Who will be the lucky contenders that challenge them? Now, I would love to see them take on the Bullet Club because they keep doing it too sweet. They act like they're Bullet Club, but they're not. Now, we see the appearance of Mickey James, who has a grudge against Deanna Perrazzo. Now, Deanna acts like what she did was nothing like wrong. Apparently, she wants to have a match against her for the knockouts title at Bound for Glory. But Deanna Perrazzo said no. And of course, it ended up in a cat fight. But the more made it happen. He felt that, you know, she has a right. But not Deanna Perrazzo. She does not feel like it's that happened, but it did. Now, Gail Kim was interviewed, if you guys have been aware, on October 9th, we're going to have the Knockouts Knockdown show taking place, all women's. 
Kiki she gave out a pretty good detail and I put that in the news update alerts later on to, in this episode however to Neil Dashwood and Madison Ray shows up asking for a shot of the of the impact knockouts tag team title so basically those titles will be on the line at no knockouts knockdown 2021 apparently they're going to be facing Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering for number one contendership, which is going to be good. Now, our main event is between Ace Austin and Mad Van Fulton taking on Josh Alexander. It was a good match. I enjoyed it. Uh, you saw that everything that uh, Ace Austin did try to win did not work. But, however, it was the walking weapon that pulled off an amazing victory on this particular match. But, however, he got himself beat up in the process and here comes Christian Cage trying to give a helping hand but apparently they were in odds or something I don't know but however we just saw the return of the fallen angel Christopher Daniels I have to say it was a good moment I liked it hope to see him more and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week uh, we are going to have the X Division tournament but for now I'll end it right here and move on with MLW Well, as you know, Major League Wrestling has a brand new show called MLW Fusion Alpha. This is their first episode, and it opened up with a greeting by none other than Caesar Durant, who is the proud owner of Azteca Underground. But those who know him, we know him as Dario Cueto, Cueto who owned Lucha Underground. And as you know, he loves violence. That's always been his dilemma. But the first match explains the violence. We have a bunkhouse match between members of Team Filthy, David Koo and Kip Osborne, the so-called legitimate son of Lance, uh, of Lance Von Erich, taking on the Von Erichs, Ross and Marshall. I have to say the match was dead on great, I have to say. But I think the best moment is Tom Lawler screwed up. He accidentally whacked Kevin Koo. And then later, the Von Erichs got rid of him. And then uh, Marshall Von Erich did an amazing uh, moves up right on top of both men on a on the door uh, uh, on the flat door, allowing him to win the match, hurting his knee in the process. But he seems okay, and I think it was a great moment and a great match. To start it off with. Now, those who have been aware of the, the existence of Major League Wrestling, they were commencing to start a brand new women's division. Apparently, they've been trying to do that. They tried that with Priscilla Kelly and Zeta Zhang. But however, now they're taking this a little further. They're calling this the MLW Women's Featherweight Division. Now, I don't know why they call that, but it's inciting because... They haven't had any women division in there since they first started. But here are the participants in that division. The Sea Stars. Ashley Vox and her sister Delmi Exo. Brittany Blake. Holiday, Zoe Sky. Willow Nightingale. And Nicole Savoy. I'm excited for this women, women's division. I think it's what MLW needs. I think many fans have been asking for it. Me, in particular, I question it. I question it every time I talk about MLW in my recent videos that I do in the past videos I did in the past. But now, it's exciting news. So, we'll see what happens then. Now, Caesar Durant was admiring his little portrait. He gets a surprise visit from someone from his past, Matt Cross. Now, those who don't know, Matt Cross was known as the son of Havoc. And looks like they have they want to continue that history. And he asked for a title shot. Now I don't know exactly if Cueto's going to do. I mean uh, Caesar's going to do that. But we'll see what happens. Now as you know we have a brand new LAX. But this time it's no longer in Impact Wrestling. It's in MLW. Conan introduced Boogie Slice. Slice Boogie. Uh. 
and of course Danny Lama. And I forgot who was the other one. So they gave them a bit of an introduction. It was a good introduction. I'm happy that LAX now can continue somewhere else. And it's going to be a great uh, moment they're going to have this. Now our next match we have is Casey Navarro taking on El Intocable Gino Medina. It was an amazing match. And it was really good. Now I was thinking this could be an upset by Casey. But no. Gino got away with it by pulling off an amazing victory. And got away with it being untouchable. Now, once again, we get Contra Unit propaganda. Joseph Samuel is sending a clear message to Alex ha Alexander Hammerstone, who is the number one contender to face for the MLW World Heavyweight title against Joseph, I mean, against Jacob Fatu. This, he's threatening him, saying that he will leave empty at fight line. But we'll see what happens then. Now, Tom Lawler has been unhappy with the results of the fact that he can't get rid of, of course, Devon Eric. So he went up to talk to Caesar Durant if he gives him a title shot. So he set them up against uh, the national champion, Alexander Hammerstone. So we don't know if there's some sort of play here thinking, okay, if he drops the title, goes in, he could win the title for the uh, world heavyweight title. I don't know. But we'll see where they're going to go with that. Our main event is TJP taking on the American Werewolf himself Davy Richard I say it was a good match I enjoyed everything of that one because it showed Davy Richard coming back after a long not being in the ring but now he is back making things great again for himself and for his career but I enjoyed it he actually pinned I mean put TJP in a submission a leg lock and apparently it he forced him to tap out and I say it was a great way for him to start with MLW in, in a good fashion so I think that's it what we got to review the, I may review MLW again if it does it on a Wednesday because they actually released this on a Wednesday I might do it the same day but who knows right now let's just move on with the latest news updates I want to put out for all of you Okay, so for the news updates we got, as you guys may or been a bit aware, AEW has announced, and of course TNT, that AEW Dynamite is moving to TBS starting on January 5th of 2022. Now, there have been reports about the possible change of the network. Um, basically, well, Warner Media owns TBS and so is TNT, of changing of that side. And I feel it's probably going to be good. Uh, I don't know, maybe because that's what they've been doing. However, what does it mean for AEW Rampage? It's already been confirmed that it will remain in TNT on a Friday. So it's good. So we don't have to worry too much. Now, this next news is coming from uh, Grand Metallic wants to be asked for his request to be released from WWE. Uh, it got rejected, I think, or not. I'm not sure. But however... I don't think, uh, to me, Rem Metallic is not could go anywhere. I doubt that he's going to be a bigger star, but we could believe that he could be picked up to become a huge star. I don't know, but he was one of those guys that not, was not being utilized, and I think it was a little crap that they're not utilizing enough. Now, as you know, I mentioned about Impact Wrestling with the knockouts, knockdown. Here's what's going to take place. Um... We have the eight women tournament. The winner of this tournament is going to have a shot of the knockouts title against Diana Perrazzo. But I do know that there are confirmed three wrestlers are in it. We have Lady Frost, uh, Mercedes Martinez, and Renee Michelle. This is going to be one hell of a show. Now, the knockouts tag team titles will be on the line. But first, this coming Thursday... We are going to see a number one contendership. Will it be the influence? Madison Rain and Tennille Dashwood taking up. Or is it going to be Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellaby? 
We'll see what the day happens. Now, the Knockouts title will be on the line on that very particular night with a mystery opponent. No one knows who it is. Then finally, we're going to have a Monster Fall match. And this one will be honored with the late uh, Daphne, who we all know she passed away. This was something. And it turns out Taylor Wilde was part of the first ever Monster Ball. And I have to say this is going to be good. Now, it's still unclear who's going to be involved in this one. My, I wouldn't be surprised if Taylor Wilde would be involved in this one. And finally, we have more on Major League Wrestling. Now, this was a bit of old news. We have the 2021 Opera Cup Tournament, and it's going to be good. Now, whoever wins it could get an opportunity for the MLW World Heavyweight title. Now, here are the eight participants that are going to participate in this one. We have Bobby Fish, Davey Richards, Alex Shelley, Matt Cross, TJP, last year's Cup winner, Tom Lawler, Lee Moriarty and Kevin Tankman. And I think this is going to be great for MLW with new stuff like this for this year. I can't wait what else they're going to put up. So I think that's pretty much it for now for all of you. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I think I did five reviews in one episode. It's been a long while since I did it and added the news updates. But it is what it is. I try to do the best I can for all of you. Coming up. We got more on the G1 Climax. We are into day four, and I'm assuming we got the B Block matches coming up. We even got the um, AEW Rampage for the Grand Slam, continuing on on the Arthur Ashe Arena. Then we got 205 Live, and also, as you know, we already have the, an, a recent event from GCW, Emo Fight. I didn't get the chance to see it because it wasn't uploaded yet on the link. But now it is. I get to watch it. I will review that on the upcoming episode on that. Same thing with the pre the next upcoming GCW event that are putting out, which I'm excited for. But there will be more to come for all of you, and I can't wait to review them. But as for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah and have a nice day.